Hello guys and welcome to another profile tree video. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the best free editing softwares for beginners. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. So here is our best free editing software for beginners. Now this is straightforward to use and something that you can download straight away and this would be located in the Microsoft Store application. Now to download it it's for free uh, you'll not have any sort of trouble that you would with downloading it or anything like that. All you need to do is hop onto the Microsoft Store and click to download on the clip champ. But with this, uh, of course, you've got a range of different templates. You've got brand kits, folders, you've got intros, outros, so quite a couple of options on clip champ. Now, uh, with the plans, I'll just go ahead and go with uh, go through it with you guys. So for the free, it will be watermark free, which is great, especially if you're creating YouTube content or if you're an influencer and you're wanting to maybe start off and everything's here for you. Now with the export resolution, it doesn't uh, subject to that as well. You've got 1080p, uh, same as it would for the paid plan. Um, you also get free stock images and you got free filters and effects uh, whilst the essentials you'll get premium stock and premium filters and effects now the only thing that you don't get is a brand kit and content backup so make sure that you keep uh, an extra file or an extra save file of the video content that you create so that's pretty much it um, you got your monthly payments there or yearly payments uh, but that's for you to decide how well you'll think this video will be uh, but anyway, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into it and I'm going to show you what ClipChamp's all about. Now jumping into it anyway, I'm going to show you how to create a video. So we'll try to make use of what we have here. So this media is basically where you can import your stuff as mentioned earlier on. So just say I wanted to maybe add a sound effect into it. I can go ahead and add a sound effect. So this is what I'm meaning. So I've, I've got a actual audio file uh, sound effect. I could drag it in and it notices it as a MP3 file. So an audio file. So that'll just play it as normal, as you could see. Now, if I wanted to add a video file, so I'll go ahead and add maybe a tutorial that I've created. So Let's see, something like this. So I've got my file explorer up, you guys can't see that. So um, there's one there. I can drag and drop that actual video onto this. Now this has been edited already. So I'll go ahead and just mute that. So if I, if I play that, you will see that it has been edited. So let's see if I can So if I say I wanted a title screen, so there wasn't a title screen on this, of course this YouTube tutorial will be based on something to do with YouTube. So I can add some text. I can go ahead and add that to the timeline. And then as soon as that pops up, so whatever time you drag it onto, whatever suits the video best, this is when you can go ahead and click on it and just click on the actual text click on text you'll be able to see i'm able to change the actual font or text so welcome to we'll just say welcome to profile tree or welcome to a profile tree video and i can change the fonts if i wanted to of course there are brand fonts that I can toss into this, which will have to be paid for. So say you had a UI or UX designer to build you a brand font, you will have to pay for the premium. However, don't lose hope. There are still other great fonts that you can use out there. Uh, but if you want to make your video extra special, of course, that's what you can do, which is adding your own brand font. With changing the colors, if you have a brand color, uh, with us it's color green. So we, of course, would want to have the glow color as a green. 
So like so, it's easy enough to do. Now, if we were editing this, so you can see that it's popping up. There is, or it's harder to see. Well, we'll just say it's harder to see. Um, if you were to add some background onto that, just go to stock images. There's quite a couple of things there for free. Uh, so the solid black background is free to use. I can go ahead and create like some sort of overlay. So you can see here, if I play it, it's a little bit glitchy. So if I go ahead and play that, you can see that it turns pitch black. There's ways to actually create like overlays if you want to. So there's a fade in and a fade out. And then let's just say that it's a bit too dark for me. I can go ahead and reduce the color of it being too solid. Now I have some branding on the very top, as you can see. Now the way to fix that is to quite literally crop down the image or you can just move it down because you'll not even see parts of the things that you're showing it's only going to show in that particular box so that's how it looks happy of how it's looking so far so if i go ahead and click on this now and play the video you can see that it darkens the background a little bit showing that contrast for the fonts so that's how that's looking so far. Of, of course, I had already created a um, font for that beforehand, but that's how it's looking. Now, they do have some stock videos as well. So say you're creating a tutorial video of some sort, or you're editing it out, and you're being a little bit specific on the things that you're saying, but you don't want to get away the user's attention, then it's sometimes great to use some of the uh, stock videos. Now these stock videos could be like something to do with like and subscribe. So it's, it's, especially if you have a YouTube channel, you can go ahead and fire that in, or it could be uh, s someone or something trying to explain something. So if, if you say you had mentioned something to do with money or investing, uh, of course you had have a video popping up with something to do with money or investing. So something like that, just to uh, keep the user's engagement if you are creating uh, YouTube tutorial videos or if you're wanting to add a little bit of flair onto your videos, you can go ahead and do that. Now, there's another one there where you've got graphics. Now, there's parts where there's annotations. Annotations, basically uh, a couple of uh, pointers or moving objects. So I'll go ahead and drag one in. I'll see if it will. There you go. So this does give like a, a little animation. I personally use this myself as well, just to guide users on where to be going at, especially if I'm creating a tutorial video like this one now. So there's a little arrow there. Uh, usually I would try to duplicate that and uh, just to really get the user's attention. Now it's very user-friendly, I would say for the interface, much easier to use than any of the other platforms like Premiere Pro if you're trying out or if you're an Apple user and you're using Final Cut Pro, uh, I've used that myself, great application to use as well. So those are another couple of recommendations you can use, but they will have to be paid for. Um, you don't fully get the free version since you will have to trial it out, say for seven days or 14 days, and you won't get the full benefit of it like you would for Clipchamp. So that's how I would normally guide a user's engagement or attention if I want them to follow something. Uh, another cool thing as well, you've got uh, GIFs and you've got stickers. So they're all really cool as well. You've got stickers there, here, uh, some shapes, uh, frame overlays. So de depending on how you want to get creative with this video, um, you can pretty much just start tossing a couple of things in. So there's one there for a frame. I don't know when you would use it, um, but it's there. So that's a really cool thing about it. Uh, so say if you had like say a little text box or something that you want to uh, guide a user's attention, like there's one YouTube premium, have a look at YouTube premium. There it is. It's pointing out very clearly that there's a red box or rectangle, red rectangle uh, surrounding it. Uh, to delete these things, by the way, is fairly easy. So all you need to do is click on it, click the delete key on your keyboard. Or the backspace. Now as well as that if you had created a mistake you've got a undo button here 
uh, on the bottom left on top of your actual editing tool, you can go ahead and click undo, or it even provides a shortcut, which is control Z. So if you guys know already control Z and control Y, then you know, you can revert and redo your changes. So moving on, we've got some transitions. So say somewhere along this video, um, I have, you can see there that I have a transition uh, from one point to another. And you can see where I'm trying to use these videos as well for the, the money part. But anyway, um, say uh, for this point here, I wanted to create a transition. There's a little cut tool, by the way, that you can use. Very, very handy to have. Especially if you have a lot of blank spaces in your video, you can go ahead and cut them out. So we'll do this. Uh, we'll split that video in half. Uh, say there's a part that I didn't like at all, which was uh, this part. Um, I can go ahead and delete that and completely remove that. So there you go. That's that. That's it there. And then I can uh, delete that space in between the two, and it will go ahead and pretty much bond the two clips together. So you see that we've got a gap in between the two clips, which was originally formed as one clip. Now, there's a thing here called transitions. Now, for those who don't know the transitions, it's basically just moving from one clip to another without looking too choppy. So if I try to demonstrate here, I'll go ahead and delete these parts. So if I go ahead and demonstrate, so I'll play the video. So as normal, it is going to start playing. So you will get times where it will buffer as well. Of course, you will be getting the software for free, so it's fairly good for what it is. Uh, but just say that there's a jump cut between these two, um, and it didn't quite work out. So it's just, it's just uh, like you see there. It's uh, too straightforward, and it uh, jump cut into the actual background. Now the way to fix that is with the transitions as mentioned. So I could do one with like push to left. So that will make sense for adding like um, audio files like this, like the swoosh. So it's like swooshing onto the next clip. Um, that's what makes it really cool. So as you can see, it's uh, flicked onto the next clip to make the transition a l uh, you know less choppy as well. So that's how that would work. Now, another thing on top of this. So depending on how you are going to create your content. So there's a couple of uh, different uh, points to creating them. So depending if it's, if it's going to be an advertisement or uh, say there's one there for 9.16. Uh, so uh, it's recommending that it's great for Instagram stories, uh, IGTV and mobile videos. So like things like YouTube shorts. Uh, TikTok, or as it's mentioned, Instagram stories. So that's the portrait mode. The one that we're on is 16.9, so that'll be good for YouTube. Now you have stuff like um, a square, which is a 1.1, and uh, it's saying the it's good for Instagram posts and carousel ads. So that's the ratio for that. You've got some social as well. You've got stuff for vertical. So there's like Pinterest and Facebook feeds. Uh, things for like cinematic, so good for films and blog banners. So re recommends quite a bit. Um, this little kit for a software for being free, you can work with it. There's a lot of things that you can't have. Um, but of course, there is the brand kit. If you want to maybe push yourself to having the brand kit, then it'll be there. Of course, we have our profile tree logo already added in. It's easy to embed uh, images. It's not hard at all. If you did find say an image online, you can just control C, control V and onto your media. So it's not hard to do. Um, but yeah, that does give you the option to do the brand kit, but of course you will have to go for the upgrade. So of course that will defeat the purpose of it being free. But if you like the software as much as I do for myself and consider would consider going for an upgrade, then it will be beneficial if you do create content all the time. So that's another thing to take into account. Uh, but of course, yep, that pretty much reaches the end of the video. And that pretty much just explains a whole lot about the 
actual application itself. Now, do you know, it's not just uh, Microsoft ClipChamp that you can use. As I've mentioned, there's stuff like Premiere Pro. Um, and if you're an Apple user, by all means, go ahead and use Final Cut Pro, a great application tool to use. This is more or less the same as ClipChamp, but of course, this is I would state this as like a beginner platform to use. And just before I end the video, there is one more thing I wanted to show, which is create a video with AI. Now, I would say that this is on its uh, beta stage, but it does qu uh, create quite a good amount of content for what you will offer. So you pretty much just add all your media files. So it could be your images, it could be your videos, just whatever you have. So once you've uh, put that in and you go ahead, so we'll, we'll, we'll drag one in. So we'll just say, um, so you'll not be able to see it on my screen, but um, I'm just gonna drag something in. So once that's loaded to 100%, it's happy enough and pretty much just get started. But of course, create an added halo onto that. So um, we'll just say video tutorial. What type of video are you making? So say other, and it could be like um, YouTube tutorial. So we'll get started. Now it'll ask you a couple of things that you'd like. So do you want it to go classic? Probably not. Minimal? Probably not. Dynamic? Yep. We'll go for elegant? No. No for organic? Um, playful? No. Editorial? Yeah. We can go a little bit bold as well. Cool, no problem. Uh, vibrant? No. Vintage? No. And that is pretty much it. Now, all you need to do, sit back, relax and wait until your video has been created. But that's how AI works. Uh, goes with what video you have, what videos you have. I would more recommend this for people who are, say, doing blogs or wanting to just create that really cool video and starting off um, and you don't have much editing skills, you could use the AI and it'll create and pop up a pretty cool looking video um, to upload or keep for yourself. So yeah, just thought to let you guys know about the AI version on ClipChamp. But yes, folks, that reaches the end of the video. So that was the best free editing software for beginners uh, or what I would recommend as a beginner. Now, let us know what you think about the software. Is it good? Is it bad? Have you maybe found something else out there? Let us know in the comment section below what you think. But anyways, as I said, that pretty much reaches the end of the video and I'll see you guys for the next one. Thank you very much for watching.